Hi, I'm Balaji Jipada and welcome back to this channel. In today's video from our Python series, we will talk about Google Collaboratory. We will explore how you can utilize Google Collaboratory to kickstart your career in data science and machine learning. The first cool thing about Google Collaboratory is there is no setup required. You can just open a web page and you can start coding within seconds. It's that much easy to code in machine learning and deep learning using Google Collaboratory. And it also offers you access to free GPUs and TPUs, which are usually very costly and also very much needed for deep learning. So you have access to high end GPUs and TPUs for free of cost. That is important. It gives you everything for free of cost. It is also highly integrated with Google Drive because Google and Google Collab and Google Drive are the products of Google and you can access everything that is there on your drive inside Google Collaboratory. And it also offers you the collaboration feature. Let's say you and your friend is working on the same notebook. You can just share the link to the notebook to your friend and you both can collaborate and edit at the same time in a single notebook. And it also comes with pre-installed libraries which are needed for machine learning and data science. So you don't need to load or install a lot of libraries. And the last but important feature of Google Collaboratory is everything runs in an instance. You don't need to put any pressure on your local machine. Google is providing you free resources like GPUs and TPUs and CPUs for free of cost for education purpose. So without any delay, let's get started. Now you can open any browser of your choice. I'm using Brave browser right here and type Google Collab and hit enter. And you can open this welcome to collaboratory link and let it wait for some time. And if you are not signed in, please sign in. It is needed before you create a new notebook. So you will be welcomed with this pop-up page where there are multiple sections to this page. Now let's understand what are the sections for. First, by default, Google Collab provides you some basic notebooks to get you started with like overview of collaboratory features, markdown guide, charts in collaboratory and there are a lot of sample notebooks that you can refer to get used to with Google Collab and I recommend you guys go through these things later but in this video we will not be talking about this. And next, recent. What is recent? If, let's say you are working on a notebook recently and that will be populated here. And then Google Drive, as I mentioned before, Google Drive is directly connected to Google Collab in the backend. And then whatever the notebooks that you are creating are by default saved in the Google Drive account. That is why signing in with the Google account is mandatory to create a new notebook. And then there is an option for GitHub as well. If you want, you can connect to your own GitHub repository and you can push your pull code from here as well. And let's say you already have a notebook with you and you want to make changes in that notebook. You can upload this notebook by clicking on the browse button and you can start working on that notebook. But for this video, let's create a new notebook and wait for some time to load. Okay. Now, once it is loaded, you will see something like this. I'm currently a little bit zoomed in so that you guys will be able to visualize it clearly. On the top right corner, you see Untitled 9. It's basically the name of this notebook. You can keep whatever the no name you want. Let's say uh, Google Collab. And it will be IPYNB extension. What is IPYNB extension? Let, let's understand it. IPYNB. I means interactive. PY is Python and NB is notebook. So this is an extension that we use for IPython notebooks. Let's say you create a, you click an image on your mobile phone and the image name will be saved as .jpeg or .png, right? Or if you are reading a PDF, then the extension of that is .pdf, right? So likewise, we have IPYNB as an extension for Jupyter notebooks. And we will understand in a bit why it is called interactive as well. But right now that understand what is the naming structure. And then on the right, you have button to share. Let's say, as I mentioned before, you want to work with some other person on the same notebook. So you can share the link to other person and he can directly collaborate on the same notebook. And we have option to connect. Now let's click on connect. And it will take some time to get connected because what is happening is right now 
on your local browser this instance is getting connected to google's uh, hardware devices in the back end and once it is connected you can click on here you can see the ram and disk once you click on that it will open this so by default you get approximately 13 gb of ram and 100 gb of disk space for free of cost for you for education purpose so use these resources carefully because there are many people across the world who are using or who wanted to use google collaborator so don't waste these resources and once you are done with the notebook i recommend you to disconnect this notebook from the back end so that these resources will not be utilized and here you can see this is called a cell this this piece is called a cell and these are the foundational blocks of google collaboratory uh, right and once you hover in between middle of this cell you, you get two options one is to code and one is to text let's say you want to write something but which is not a coding format then you can say i am testing this notebook and you can click outside and it will be saved as like this it is not a code block it is just for documentation purpose and if you want to write something for coding i can just say print welcome to balaji channel and once you are done writing your code there is this option called execute this cell you can click on this one or you can do shift command plus shift and it will get executed and the output of your code will be presented here welcome back to welcome to balaji channel so let's understand the first things you haven't done anything to set up your environment and yet you are able to do python coding in browser within seconds that is the power of google collaboratory i can do whatever i want let's say print this is amazing and i can just execute it and i, I will get the output here I don't need to set up anything, not even the Python environments as well. And so that's how you do it. And now let's understand a couple of tools on the top here. You can click on the file and you can just create a new notebook, open a new notebook, upload a new notebook if you already have, and you can rename from here as well. And by default, these notebooks are connected in that Google Drive account, but you can also create a copy in the drive. So these are all the things that you have to go through and explore. I, I don't want to waste time in explaining all of these things, but I will explain the things which are needed for you uh, for executing your code in a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, okay, these are all normal and view. View is also normal and insert. You can insert a code cell or text cell or else you can directly hover your mouse in between the cell and you, you will get an option to either insert code cell or text cell. And there is no limit on how many code cells you uh, you have to insert or you have to use. You can use as many as you can. And on the top and, and at the right of every cell, you have an option to move the cell up or down, right? So that it will be easy for you to navigate or move the code from one place to another place. And you have an option to delete these cells as well. Like, well, let's, let's delete all of these cells. Okay, and runtime. Runtime is very important. Now let's create a new code cell and let's say for i in range of 10, print i. Okay, and here let's say print Balaji. B A L H I. You can execute each of these cells separately by clicking on this icon right here. Or else what you can do is you can click on runtime and run all what it will do is it will execute all the cells from the starting to the end of this notebook that is run all and one more thing is run before what it will do is click on any cell that you want to execute and if you click on run before it will execute all the cells that are present before this cell not this current cell and it will not execute anything after this cell and then you have done the run the focused cell it's basically you can click on the cell that you want to execute and you can click run the focused cell it's basically doing the same thing from here as well and then run after is basically execute all the cells that are after your selection cell and the next thing is let's say your code is taking a lot of time to execute you can just interrupt the execution or you can just restart the session what does restart do restart what restart does is restart will eliminate or erase all the local variables that you have declared if you if, if you have uploaded any data to the google collaboratory that is not in the drive that will also get deleted if you restart a session okay now let's not restart right now 
and then disconnect session and delete runtime once you are done executing your notebook you can just say disconnect and delete runtime what it will do is it will release the allocated ram and disk from google's resources to your web page right now so that some other person can utilize if you are not using it actively so this is very much needed once you are done with the coding you can just click on disconnect and delete runtime it will not delete your google sorry it will not delete your code it will be saved in the google drive but it will disconnect the instance from the google's hardware servers and change run type let's say you want to use gpus or you want to use tpus you can change the runtime that's what it is and right now i don't need to use gpus for coding or tpus for python unless and until it's deep learning so i will be keeping it on cpu itself save and view and manage resources you can see how much resources that it's got allocated and how it is utilizing from the notebook as well and tools you can create some keyboard shortcuts and everything it's up to you guys how you can explore it's up to you guys how you can explore and utilize google collaboratory okay now let's talk about a couple of things on this side you have file icon you, you can just click on this upload icon option and you can upload any data to your google collaboratory file and this data will get deleted after you disconnect the runtime because this is data is not in the google drive and you have an option for google drive as well and you can mount google drive and if you want to connect to google drive you can just click on connect and it will get connected and if you see mounting google drive and once it is done you have option to get access to all the data that is present in your google drive with with a single click of the button and this is basically refresh if you are if you have made any changes to this notebook which is saving the files onto the google collaborator you can just refresh here and you will be able to see it and then you can uh, find and replace variables and all that stuff normal stuff guys and then you have this icon called code snippets what google collaboratory does is it will provide you pre-built code snippets so that you don't need to write let's say let's create a new code cell and let's say i want to connect my google drive but not from the file storage location but with the code now i will say connect google drive if you see import data uh, mounting google drive to the virtual machine you can just click on here and you can just say insert what it will do is it will insert the code by default to your cell in the google collaborator notebook you can just execute this and it will mount the google drive on this uh, instance because i am already connected to google drive it is saying uh, uh, connect to google drive and i can it will open a new page and i will give access to this google drive and it will get connected right now i will not do this and i will cancel it okay and i think i covered most of the points here and uh, if you have any queries please let me know uh, in the comment section below and if you are liking the content that you are visualizing or watching please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to get notified daily whenever we upload videos and going forward we will be using google collaboratory much extensively because we will be doing our python coding on google collaboratory and we will also be doing machine learning and deep learning on google collaboratory only so you guys needs to get hands on on google collaboratory unless and until you are comfortable with google collaboratory there is not much we can do by moving forward and that's all for this video hopefully we will meet you in the next video bye bye